I'm Kusha Karvandi, and you're listening to Exerscribe Radio, the source for biohacking your health to reach your full potential. I created Exerscribe to provide people with a roadmap to working out. With our new workout app, you can get a custom workout program that adapts your workouts to your body type, goals, sleep quality, stress levels, and personal preferences. With live chat support, our workout app has become so comprehensive some call it a personal trainer in your pocket. Our users are seeing over 90% success rates with their goals because we take the neural approach to fitness, meaning we integrate movements and exercises that recalibrate your brain and body to prime you for rapid strength gains and fat loss. Check out the Exoscribe workout app in the iTunes App Store today. In today's podcast, I interview UJ Ramdas, the creator and host of the Mental Ed Show podcast. UJ is passionate about bringing together practical psychology and business to create a better world. With a background in behavioral science, marketing, and hypnosis, he's consulted with several hundred clients, bringing them from confusion to clarity. UJ is also the creator of the 5-Minute Journal. The 5-Minute Journal is built with proven principles of positive psychology, where they prime your brain, cultivate gratitude, and grow your mindset. The 5-Minute Journal is the simplest, most effective thing you can do every day to be happier. Learn more about UJ's 5-Minute Journal at 5minutejournal.com. Okay, everyone, we're here on Extra Scribe Radio with the creator of the 5-Minute Journal and host of the Mental Ed Show podcast, UJ Ramdas. Welcome, UJ. Thanks for having me, Kisha. So just to get started, could you tell the audience a little bit about you and your background? Sure. So, um, so originally, my background is in cognitive science and marketing, uh, mostly because I, I believe uh, we take too long to tell people how to um, change behavior. Rather, marketers show it. And so marketers get paid on results where psychologists don't. Uh, figured it's also, it would, would also make a lot of sense because I tended to do things on my own. So kind of pursued um, that route, um, started a couple of businesses, um, got into hypnosis for some time and, uh, and really, you know, what, what, what I love is seeing a lot of science condensed into an easy, to, easy to do practice. And that's something i had been doing for, um, quite some amount of time. And then I was, I was with a friend, we had a great conversation and he said, why don't you turn this into a book? So we, we created the five minute journal, um, about almost a year and a half ago. Um, we launched it, and so far, you know, we've, we've been blessed. It's it's, um, it's been well received. And what what I really like is to to take a lot of the the complexity out of the practice. And so, as as you probably know and have seen, um, journal is easy to do. Um, it's quick. It's effective. And and the general aim of the company, Intelligent Change, is to promote and and create great products that make people happier. So that's a that's a kind of intro. Yeah, so tell me more about the five minute journal. Like, how long is this thing, and what's in it, and how does it work? Well, it's five minutes. <laughs> um, but what it is is okay. So you look at um, a lot of the research that in positive psychology the last twenty or so years. Before that, we were mostly studying sick people and depressed people. Um, and just like you won't learn how to get rich by looking at somebody who is um, homeless, you're not going to look at you're not going to understand what makes people happy and fulfilled if you look at people who are depressed and um, anxious all the time, right? So there's a very high disproportion of, of research um, on the, the extreme cases, on the psychosis, on schizophrenia, on anxiety, et cetera, as compared to gratitude, um, happiness, fulfillment, well-being, performance, et cetera. Uh, those experiments were more conducted by the army because they were interested in performance. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and previously psychology was interested in, in maintaining the norm or being averagely neurotic as everybody else. Um, and the very small population as you know, I know are interested in so-called biohacking, right? So it's, it's a smaller segment of population that you would, you would think. Uh, would be interested in it because it has all of the potential uh, that we can realize in our bodies and minds. It's incredible. So, so if you really look at all the research, it comes down to a set of practices you can do very quickly. There's not a lot of 
the thought you need to put into it, you just need to have the right format and the right questions and the right time to do them. The timing is critical because timing can mean the difference between just like nutrition, just like um, you know, protein intake, etc. When you when you do something psychologically, it has a huge impact. So the beginning of the day is a great place and time to start the five minute journal. It starts with gratitude, right? So my my intention is is for people as soon as they wake up, just just like they brush their teeth in the morning and they brush their teeth at night. This is like a toothbrush for your mind, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're you're brushing your teeth. You're brushing it because you don't want, you know, you don't want dirty teeth. You don't want bad breath. You want to keep them clean. You want to keep them going. And you want to keep them for a long time. Same thing with your mind. Your mind is going to stay with you for a very long time. And very few people have practices, daily, consistent practices, to be able to keep it clean, to keep it positive, to keep it going. We invariably come across obstacles, mistakes, problems, etc., the only way we can deal with them is we continue to renew that resource that is our mind. So a source of gratitude, um, it also involves some things like priming the brain, which you might be familiar with, um, which is about seeding things in the future. So interesting study uh, mentions that if, if I ask you, Kusha, what's your favorite movie? And, and what's your favorite movie? Just, just for the uh, sake of the question. Favorite movie? Yeah. Iron Man. Iron Man. It's a good movie. Um, <laughs> so, so let's say I tell you, like, in three hours, Kusha, you and I are going to watch Iron Man, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they, they test your serotonin levels now. Test your serotonin oxytocin levels, like, just before taking the, uh, watching the movie. You're, you're more excited before watching the movie than the actual movie itself. You're more excited for the experience you've had in your mind than the experience of watching the movie. And this has been scientifically proven, right? So how do we take advantage of this hack, right? How do, how do we actually use this? Um, well, here's how. If I ask you in the morning, as soon as you wake up right after gratitude, when you're already in a good mood, what are three things you can do to make today great? Right? You're automatically seeding three things, not one thing, not your favorite movie, but three things that, that are going to make today great. Mm-hmm. And so what I find Consistently, when I when I do all three of those things, I have a phenomenal day. And it's it's not often, it's not it's not always, but when I do have those three things done, it's incredible. And so that's really important. So you seed those experiences and build the anticipation in to your day. And, and you know that that correlates in in greater well being, happiness, etc. The final thing is is just a you know who do you want to be today. What do you want to show up as? And that, that's a very conscious decision to show up as, as something, someone that you want to show up as. And so that, that's an affirmation. That, and that's, and that's in the morning. And right, right before you get to bed, it's very simple. Two questions. You know, what are three amazing things that happened today? So automatically, when you, it, it, it trains for positivity recall. Right? Positivity recall bias. So when you look back, you look at all the things that were good automatically over a period of time, over a week, 10 days, a year, year and a half, you'll notice the more you look at the past, you look at the good stuff because you're training your mind to look back and, and ask yourself, what, what was amazing today? What was a really nice moment today? Um, last question is, what, what would you do differently? Right? So uh, a quote that I really like and was inspired by was, uh, quote that went, uh, how you live your days is how you live your lives. And uh, that, was, that was pretty impactful to me because if you don't some, like something in your day, your life could be like that if you do it too long. Um, and so that's an important question. What would you do differently if you had the day again? And that's it. That's, that's the format. It's going to take you five minutes, not more. If you're taking it longer, uh, you're, you're probably overthinking it. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that. I, I feel <laughs> like uh, words are extremely powerful, you know, yeah. with these positive affirmations and, and the questions that you said that you should be asking yourself. I, I like that a lot, and I know that's been proven to be effective. Uh, what's the Mental Edge show all about? Well, what I do is um, I like to bring people on that are, are specifically, like, done something in a certain uh, field or an area or someone that fascinates me, 
and I bring them on. And usually it's someone that fascinates me. Um, if it's someone that fascinates me, it's usually somebody who has something to share with the audience about um, their story, their life, their experience, their knowledge, etc. And so there, there's, a, there's a range of, of, uh, of things there, right? Um, every, every person has their own story. I think we learn more um, through stories than through, through systems. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stories have, you know, I'm, I'm very system. I, I like systems. I love uh, implementing them. But I do believe that they have limitations because you, a story can com compel you to take action in a way that sometimes systems can't. So they, have, they have to each have their place. That's really good. Yeah, thank yeah, you. It makes perfect sense. So, what what are the some of the best stories that you've uh, you've heard in your podcast or uh, oh, wow. or just in general? Um, well, there are, there are a few, right? So, uh, Ari Mazel has a great story. I don't know if you've uh, you're familiar with him, but uh, he he he'd overcome um, Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. which um, is incredibly incredibly painful, and uh, and so he's had similar experience since with with nutrition where the the status quo doctor nutrition diet um, wasn't doing anything for him and he changed it took matters in his own hands and uh, and changed that but that was the system part of it right but the story part of it is he overcame this this incredibly painful illness by doing something almost incredibly even more incredibly painful consciously. Right, he decided to do Iron Man's, and he decided to beat his body into submission, which which is such a great lesson, right? Um, so even even some some trained veteran athletes will not try Iron Man because Iron Man will absolutely destroy your body. Um, it, it is over over time it will degrade your joints. It's just it's just fact. Uh, and Greenfield talks about it. A lot of other endurance athletes talk about it. There is a price you pay for being in endurance sports for a long time. And, um, and so Ari did it for a short period of time just to beat his body into submission. So he had to consciously choose to surmount an obstacle that was even more painful than his current illness, Crohn's. Wow. And it is through that journey that he actually came out of it. You know, the diet was part of that transformation. But he had to consciously choose to move way past the pain threshold that he was getting. And once his body got it, <laughs> he got out of that, he he got out of the Iron Man circuit. So it's an interesting story. That's crazy. Yeah, no, my, my wife actually has Crohn's. Wow. And was able to overcome it and go into remission with uh, with nutrition. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So he would he would be a good guy to contact and get a hold of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What are some of your own personal favorite mental and physical performance hacks? This is a proud question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to give them a little bit more context. Um, like in what, what, what area, what field? When it comes to just like your you know, general daily routine, you know, when you work out or you, know, you were talking about how you kind of prepare for the day, like brushing your teeth, what are some of the things that are just part of your normal routine? I can, I can run you through my morning routine if that, if that, um, sure. If that's helpful. Yeah. So wake up, I did the final journal, um, I brush my teeth, um, weigh myself, get in the shower, um, and then, and do some supplements, um, topical magnesium, et cetera, uh, oral, topical, everything. And, uh, meditate for anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, and I'll, I'll then go to the gym. Um, pre-workout before that or the gym, um, come out and typically read for a little bit of time and then eat. And that's that, that ends my morning routine. You said you have a pre-workout before you go and work out? Well, um, yeah. What well, just, that? just, uh, well, before you go work out, just, just know where you, where you're getting into. So before, before I, I start the day, usually go, whenever you're going somewhere, go with a plan, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, before you start the day, have a plan. <laughs> before you go hit the gym, have a plan. So, you know, you, you hit exactly where you're going and just take care of business. So, it's not necessarily a supplement or like a pre-workout drink you're having before your workout. Um, there is a drink I have, hmm. um, but it's, it, it's, it's more of like a time to 
like a 10 minute window to just kind of brief in. Oh, and I see. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people do that in the gym and it's, it's it costs time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So you're, you're, it's kind of like your mental preparation for what you're yeah. going to attack. Exactly. Yeah. So you do the prep before. It's just like uh, what um, Sun Tzu was my favorite philosopher is, right? Is his, you know, the general that knows himself and knows his enemy will win the war. Right? If you really know your, your flaws and your weaknesses, one of my flaws is, you know, if I go into the gym without prep, I'm going to waste time. Right. So knowing my flaws, I can, I can compensate for that by, by just doing prep, which I'm good at. So. I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, in addition to your background in behavioral science and marketing, I also notice you have a little bit of a background in hypnosis. You know, yeah. tell, tell me about that. How do you apply that to your clients? Well, I don't apply it anymore. Um, I used to be at a behavior change, change clinic and, uh, and that was fun. That was that was really exciting. That was okay. That was like imagine you know you you really love doing something, and then you're getting all kinds of new um, experiences to test your theories and assumptions on. And so it was kind of like that. So, so hypnosis is you know for general population who's thinking this is some kind of a, a pendulum swinging back and forth. It's actually a natural state that we go into and come out of all the time. It's just trance. It's just a way, it's an altered state. And if people are still not in their heads, it's because it's been a while since they've gotten out of, of you know, the, the waking state of consciousness. Um, in between waking and sleep, there are many levels. And we can choose to go into those levels. Those levels are very valuable. Right? So you're not feeling right before you go to sleep. You're almost asleep, but you're not quite. And someone calls your name. And, and you actually have a choice because you're almost so asleep that you, you can't almost answer anymore. But if you, if you had a choice, you could answer. That's hypnosis. That is the hypnagogic state. That's, that's the in-between state where you're still conscious, yet your unconscious is open to suggestion, open to um, molding of the unconscious. Hmm. So um, this has been used in... For thousands of years, like this was used in Egypt and sleep temples. Um, it's a very interesting history. It's got it was used uh, by Mesmer um, it, it, in very interesting terms. Like he used to lay people on um, a bed and then have like large rotating magnets move over them. <clears throat> and Mesmer thought it was because of the magnets. It's why why it started uh, sort of be calling like. Mesmerism was actually um, thought to have started by him hovering magnets over people's bodies. But later it was found out actually it's the natural human state uh, of suggestibility. When they go into it, you know, it, it promotes rapid healing. Hmm. Where do you get a lot of this information from? Like how do you stay on the cutting edge? <sighs> read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, read. Um what are some books I think, you suggest? Um, in, in in which which line? There's a lot of lot of things to cover, right? Yeah, like in uh, terms of like there's a lot of things that have changed my life. There's a lot, lot of things that are um, that are specifically uh, to do with like brain plasticity. There's it's just a range. Sure, in terms of just you know general health and fitness, what are some of the best books out there? General health and fitness. Okay, so general health and fitness is not my industry. Uh, I have to like say that it's it's not my uh but um kelly storitz uh supple leopard is a great book mm -hmm. yeah that's a uh, great book yeah that's it's you know um this isn't more this isn't like a instructional manual by, by any means but uh, educational of a, of a bodybuilder mm. by um right that's again such a great story yeah exactly right um you, here's a man who did, you know, pretty much anything he set, set, set his mind to, right? Mr. Universe, several times in a row, um, become, became a movie star, became uh, mayor of California, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's incredible. And so he did everything he set his mind to, even though, you know, nobody really believed he could. 
And so that, that's, that's a phenomenal story. Um, what else do I like? Um, I like Pavel stuff mm-hmm. on, on kettlebells. I think, I think he's got, it's got a lot of good stuff on there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with that for now. What do your workouts usually look like when you go to the gym and work out? What do you typically oh, do? Oh, right now is it's, it's different. Um, right now, actually, because, okay, so I have to get into this because you brought it up. I was involved in a motorcycle accident about four and a half months ago, um, a serious motorcycle accident. So I had four broken ribs, collapsed lung, shattered pelvis in three places um, in Indonesia. Right, so it was, wow. I was completely away from family, friends, and um, so I'm I'm still rehabbing right now. I'm still rehabbing, and uh, rehab still means that in the gym, but it, it's it's a different kind of routine um, than I would I guess normally be doing. I'm really happy. I was still still hitting the gym um, there, which is what actually helped so much um, before the accident. But yeah, now my workouts look different because of, of my rehab. So it's more like half workout, half rehab. So a lot of abduction, um, adduction, hip flexion, a lot of hip work, um, a lot of pelvic work, um, a lot of uh, um, back muscle strengthening because I was on, on, on my left side for a long time. So uh, the muscles on my right atrophied mm-hmm. uh, because of the lungs um, – my, I lost chest muscle because um, because if lungs are uh, damaged, the body catabolizes body uh, the muscle to supply lung tissue because you need need that to breathe. Mm-hmm. So for about a month, uh, you know, it's it's healing is, is serious stuff, <laughs> right? Um, so so yeah, so that's that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So that's probably not a um, great point. Um, for people to take value from because I'm, I'm rehabbing so they're not gonna get a lot of stuff from this question <laughs> yeah what about your diet what does your diet look like um mostly plant-based um so lots of lots of good quality fats um lots of uh lots of vegetables lots of fruit i'll have meat every once in a while um twice or thrice a week uh, but nothing crazy. Don't do wheat. Don't do dairy. Don't do sugar. Awesome. Yeah. And what do you think the future of health and fitness looks like? I mean, where is everything headed? A uh, good place. <laughs> 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 I, I really think, um, you know, you know, if you zoom out, you know, zoom out, like say 10, 20, 30 years, um, and just, just look at, look at our timeline right now. I think we're we're in the middle of, or at least like in in the in the midst of a, of a pretty pretty great revolution, right? Human beings at a never before pace are getting freedom to explore their choices, to do what they want to do. Uh, they vote with the dollars. They um, consume information like you know in pretty much unprecedented unprecedented in history, which basically means um, there's going to be a like a divide, right? It's going to be a divide between people who, who are at the leading edge of things and are adapting to how fast information is throwing them stuff. And there's going to be, you know, a, a larger majority of people who can adapt as quickly, right? So, you know, time is always an evolutionary battle. So there's always going to be that group is always going to adapt quick, learn, implement, test, operate, test, exit, test, operate, test, exit, right? And those people move rapidly forward. And if they're those people are, in, are, are behind systems, large systems, organizational systems, government, businesses, etc., most likely businesses, right? They're, they're going to bring a systemic change to the rest of the population. If not, the rest of the rest are screwed. What about technology? <laughs> what, what technologies do you think are going to emerge for you know uh, improvement of your health and fitness and wellness? Well, there's already a lot of tracking stuff out there, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's I think um, next ten years we'll see a lot more of uh, medical grade 
uh, analysis and equipment in, in our phones, right? Or at least devices that are easy to operate. So a lot, a lot of, um, a lot of medical stuff is all is going going to be dumbed down and made made easy for the rest of the world to to actually use, because you know a lot of medical um, schools are realizing that their curriculums are really outdated, and they're so outdated that most people with access to an internet connection can f know more about something than their doctor because they studied it six years ago. So. Um, so people are taking this more and more into their hands. And that, that's definitely, devices is, is a pretty, pretty interesting uh, market. It's only going to grow uh, as time moves forward. So that, that's definitely something. I think the general awareness, it will grow. It is growing already, but it will grow. Um, and it will expand. To what level it will expand, we'll see. But I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. What's one simple tip you think our listeners could start with today? you know, to take action, to, to improve like their mental performance or whatever it may be just to get better. Um, so these sounds, some sound, sounds like two things, but it's actually one thing. Um, the first one is introspect. Introspect. Um, so about four or five months ago, I started doing something called a weekly review. Right. So, uh, at the end of the, the week, I look back and I look at look at my calendar, like time blog, everything. I go, okay, what happened here? What was good? What wasn't good? What did I learn? If I would have set next week up for success, what would that look like? Right. And I took about a half hour doing it. I looked at the patterns. I looked at you know where my time was going. What was great about that? What were my good experiences? What experiences I didn't really want anymore? And it was a really great way of visually looking and allocating my time. It was incredible. And I started doing that every week. And it absolutely blew my mind of how much I've learned in those weekly reviews of where my time has gone. And to think I've been alive for like probably 26 something years before that, not have ever had that concept that I could learn so much from like a half hour about myself and better myself. So introspection is huge. Um, that half hour is very valuable to me. And so that helps you. So introspection and tracking are actually one thing. When you're introspecting, you're actually tracking. You're beginning to see where progress is being made, right? So if someone says, I don't see progress, I don't see progress, if, you, if they equated you know, a bar from left to right, right? Left being, you know, it's usually where you start and right being, here's where you finish and in between being a progress bar. If you're continuously looking at a progress bar, you will progress because that's, that's, your mind interprets information visually, right? Which is why it's so great to have these apps and, the, and these, these, these technologies that actually show us progress. Things like the Pomodoro Technique, things like Freedom, the app, all great tools to, be going, to, to really take time in your own hands. So, um, yeah, so introspect and track stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. simple, simple strategies yeah. sometimes are the best. And, and you can get deeper into that, right? In, in the introspection, some people find it this hard, so they, they can just have a format that helps them introspect better with specific questions and they can just print that out or they can just compile it into a, into a folder. Yeah. Every week you just fill that out and you're done. That's awesome. Yeah. Where can the audience learn more about you and, and your show and your journal and awesome. all that? Well, um, you can they just head over to ujirandas.com. Um, that will have most of the information. Um, and you can head out head over to five in the journal.com, right? We're, we're going to have more products. Um, uh, always going to be coming up with cooler, newer stuff. So, you can check that out too. Awesome. Well, thank you, UJ. Awesome stuff today. I definitely took away a lot of cool uh, mental hacks and some techniques to, uh, to better improve myself. So thanks again for joining us today on Extrascribe Radio. You're welcome, man. All Take right. care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.
If you haven't already, get your custom workout program by downloading the Exerscribe app from the iTunes App Store today. Thank you.